Okay, thank you for being here tonight. We're going to bring the council meeting to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, good evening. Uh, we have a roll call, please, Ms. LeBrow. Mr. Adler. Here. Mrs. Cantor. Here. Mr. Captain. Here. Ms. Casperson's absent. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Doors absent. Mrs. Hall. Here. Ms. Kindle. Here. And Mr. Slifka. Here. Thank you, Ms. LeBrow. Um, we first want to announce that, you know, there was a, um, I think a, editorial cartoon in one of the local papers that indicated that our meetings tend to go a little long. Um, and uh, we, we, are, we do not anticipate be going that long tonight. So um, knock on wood. Let's hope that works. Um, we have a lot of special guests here tonight. So I'd like to begin with um, entertaining a motion to suspend the rules to, uh, to do three things. Um, one is to have a presentation on the pink party. Second is to present a proclamation. And third is to move item 27 on the agenda up to uh, up to the top here after those other two items. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, yes, <laughs> Mr. O'Brien, <the laughs> voting like you did in the 80s, right? The 10th <laughs> vote. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'd like to begin by calling up, sorry, I got a lot of paper here tonight, uh, Elsa Case, Ann Morris, and Barbara Lerner, uh, who are going to tell us about the first annual Pink Party on Thursday, October th uh, 4th in West Hartford Center uh, here in Blueback Square. And just press that button so everybody can hear you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to hear us tonight. I wanted to use this opportunity to formally invite everyone from the council and the town of West Hartford to the first annual Pink Party, CT1 Media, Fox, Connecticut, the Hartford Current, Hartford Magazine, is partnering with Coleman, Connecticut, the town of West Hartford, Blueback Square, West Hartford Merchants Association, and the West Hartford Chamber of Commerce to put this event on to kick off Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's next Thursday, October 4th, from 5.30 to 7.30, right in Blueback Square. We're really excited. We have a live band that will be playing Frank Sinatra music all night. We have dance performances from the Arthur Murray Dance Studio, Frank Sinatra, uh, Fred Astaire Studio as well. We have a breast cancer survivor fashion show featuring all the latest um, trends and styles from local retailers. We're going to be selling $20 swag bags filled with all sorts of great goodies. 100% of that will be benefiting Coleman. We also have um, a raffle that will be going on, great prizes, everything from yoga lessons up to uh, a trip to Anguilla. So we have a lot of good things there, only a dollar a ticket for that. Um, it's going to be hosted by our Fox Connecticut news anchor, Allison Morris. Uh, we're also going to be doing uh, cut-ins for our 4 o'clock news from Blueback Square to help promote that. If you haven't seen it already, we're using all of our platforms, the Hartford Current, the magazine, uh, Fox Connecticut, to try to get the word out to get people to come out to support the event. Um, and I wanted Ann to just tell a little bit about um, the cause and, and why we've partnered for this. Sure. Thanks so much, Elsa. And thank you so much to CT1 Media and the town of West Hartford for putting this on. Um, as a resident of West Hartford lifelong, I'm very, very proud that this event is being held here as the first annual. Um, a little bit about Coleman, Connecticut, quickly. Uh, last year, we raised about $2 million in the state of Connecticut. And we are a local organization, a 501c3 here in Connecticut. And I do report to a local board of directors. Of that $2.2 million, 75% of it is granted to local community-based organizations right here in Connecticut. The uh, Hartford Hospital mobile mammography van will be here on the 4th in front of Town Hall. We fund that van. Uh, we fund St. Francis Hospital. We fund a Spanish-speaking support group at Hispanic Health Council. We fund programs in Fairfield County. We fund programs all over the state of Connecticut. And we currently have $3.9 million worth of research underway in the state of Connecticut. So the money we raise in Connecticut is invested in Connecticut, and we are quite proud of that. I think a lot of people will take the Coma name and kind of connect it to the national organization. None of the money we raise in Connecticut goes to the national organization. 
We just share that name via an affiliation agreement. I would like to draw the attention, both of your viewers and of the council, to a report we issued in 2011 that highlights the towns in Connecticut that have the highest incidence mortality in late stage diagnosis of breast cancer. And unfortunately, West Hartford falls into two of those categories. And one of them, as a resident, really surprised me. Uh, West Hartford is one of the 20 towns with the highest incidence of breast cancer in Connecticut. And it's also one of the 20 towns with the highest late stage mortality. And what that means is we have the most women getting diagnosed at stage three or stage four. And this is per 100,000. So that's a really great concern considering the demographics here especially. You would expect that in certain other urban areas perhaps, but you really wouldn't expect that um, in towns like West Hartford. And we share that um, with other towns of equal de demographics like Glastonbury, South Windsor, and also Trumbull, Connecticut. Um, so we really have to do some work, I think, still on educating and raising awareness, even to, to women that are well-educated and do have health insurance, about the importance of screening and early diagnosis. Because an early diagnosis does save lives, we know that. A five-year survival rate early diagnosis is over 99%. It's not so good with a stage four diagnosis. So um, I won't get into my, my big educational talk tonight, but I just, we're here to thank you. I've brought a little pink for each and every one of you that I will leave on the table in case you have no pink to wear. We hope to see you all there next Thursday night on the 4th, and thank you again for your time. Thank you. Town thank Man. you very much. Okay, so the second we have... Uh, Okay, the proclamation, I'll just go over to the other. So we have a lot of people from WHC-TV in the audience. Um, I see, I don't know who wanted to come up. I have, I have Jennifer Evans, we have Jatu Huntley. With all of you guys here, I'm wondering how we're being broadcast at the moment. Um, but perhaps it's part of your, uh, your success. Uh, but as they, I'll, so I'll start to read this. Um, as they come up, whereas the health and vitality of a community is reflected in the participation of its citizens in those activities that further the strength of the town, and whereas West Hartford Community Television, WHC-TV, has been awarded the, uh, by the Alliance for Community Media the 2012 Overall Excellence Award for Public Educational and Government Access, and whereas WHC-TV has been serving the West Hartford community for nearly 31 years and created a foundation for some really unique and special moments that have made WHC-TV stand out among the other community access stations. And whereas Executive Director Jennifer Evans, right here, initiated WHC-TV's Be the Media Project, which introduces citizen journalists in schools and neighborhoods to create short videos about local news and events. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on behalf of the Town Council and the residents of West Hartford, I, Mayor Scott Slifka, do hereby declare the month of October, which, well, it's not today. It'll be, you have a future, future uh, proclamation, uh, to be the West Hartford Community Television Month, and sincerely thank uh, Executive Director Jennifer Evans, her talented team, including Jatu Huntley and Virginia Fisher, for their commitment to engaging our community and producing a first-class community access television station in West Hartford. Congratulations. Um, now, you guys don't often get to go in front of the camera, and I don't know if you, you want to tonight, but I, I, we can, I, I'd be happy to. Nobody's volunteering, but I, I want to point a couple things out to everybody uh, in the audience at home. One, that this is, a, this is an amazing award. This is not something um, that is a, a small accomplishment in any way, and you should know that this has come as a result of, um, you, they get pretty intense review of the programming that they put on and compare it to other communities. And this is, be, this is in part being awarded because of the things that they did during the October storm last year. It's for overall excellence, but um, I think it's been acknowledged that WHC-TV here in West Hartford stood out amongst all the, the similar stations um, in well, across the country, particularly New England, where we were hit for their coverage during that period. And, and Virginia's here, and I thought that was, it, it's, it's per, perhaps appropriate because we mentioned the Be the Media campaign. And um, we've had a lot of students in town involved in that. And one thing that many people did not pick up on was during the storm, one of the, there was a, um, something became a big news story from one of, our, one of our TV stations, I think it was NBC 30, that, that carried it. But the source of it was actually, was she a fifth grader? Uh, eighth, grader. eighth grader who came to one of our meetings and captured on a small flip camera a 
disagreement of sorts that was going on between us and the <laughs> a certain company that provides power. And, and, uh, and then she did some interviews afterwards. And this actually got, in this new media age, got picked up um, by a major news station and became a story in and of itself. And I don't know that they ever fully explained that the person who was the source of this was an eighth grader here in West Harvard. That became out of the work that, that Virginia and Jatu and, and Jen have done, in, in addition to all the other program that you could see all the time, including I think her tonight. her question to you was, what should I tell my parents about Northeast utilities? <laughs> uh, famous last word. Right? So, so anyway, I, I, I'm sorry for doing all the talking, but um, we get pretty passionate about your work, work here, and, and we want to let you, would you like to step out and say There's something? One thing I, I would like go to ahead, Jatu. You can go first. Um, I would just like to, first of all, give a, a quick um, thank you to Micah Barche. That's who's actually running the camera right now. He just <laughs> saw you with um, the marriage report. So Micah, thank you so much for that. And Micah was also a big, a big part of that um, uh, mobilization of our media, media teams for that October storm. He helped out a lot with that. But I just like to share it with all of our volunteers. Um, a lot of the people, even on the council, who we've worked with um, a lot with, um, it's just, um, it's not just us, it's the whole community, and we truly do celebrate, celebrate it and share it with just everyone in town. It's just amazing. So, thank you. Well said. <laughs> and just, I guess there's not much to add to that other than that I think that our goal and our mission has always been to build community through media. And it's something that's very important to us, and it's something that happens because of the great foundation that was started here, because somebody, when it, the opportunity to have a channel became available, there was leadership and community support and citizen participation that allowed the channels to begin. And what we've done has been able to just grow and grow with technology, and that's made possible because of the support of this community. And it makes this, this community is a special place. And, you know, it, it's a joy for us to have the opportunity to cover the diversity and the amazing stories that happen here in our town. And I think that that alone makes it, it's just a fabulous opportunity. And we are proud to be part of bringing this technology up to make our signal and make our stories available to as many people as possible. And that's been one of our primary goals in over the last three years. And we feel like being named the best small station in America is just a huge, it's never happened to a Connecticut station with our regulatory structure and the way we are. And that's a real testament to my team and to the volunteers and to all the people who have supported us. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, before, uh, the minority leader had an excellent uh, suggestion. Before uh, Jen or Jatu or Virginia go, maybe you want to mention your fundraiser that is coming up? You, you can come back up and do it here. We're not, we haven't moved on yet. I think, okay, so on Oct Saturday, October 20th, we're going to celebrate being named the best small station in America by uh, having our capital campaign, something that happens every two years. It has, something, has been historically a fundraiser that has allowed us to do great things. It's allowed us to make video on demand possible. It's uh, a really important capital uh, event for us. And it's going to be fun. It's called Back to WHCTV's Future. And it's going to feature a lot of faces that you know. Uh, Sarah Connor is going to be our host. We have uh, Darren Sweeney from NBC30, who's a West Hartford resident, who's going to come in and uh, help us be a special MC. We have um, a great auction items, and if anyone out there would like to donate an auction item or become an underwriter of this event, we would be so thrilled to have that happen. And it's going to have an eight, be a great 80s party as we look back on 1981, the very first program a telecast on WHC TV, and it was a Board of Education debate. So, you know, I think we have a history of, of trying to, you know, share um, 
of trying to engage citizens to participate in a community dialogue. And we're going to look back at 30 years of community TV and have a lot of clips and just really celebrate the people that got us there. And among those people are our DECA producers. And we have 15 people who have been the face and the heart and soul of West Hartford Community TV for quite a while. And there are people like Harriet Tunney and Deborah Buckley from the Rotary and Neil the Real Deal Sackow, you know, who was our collector, Billy Levy, uh, John Boney, you know, Michael Galtieri, who was a student with us and produced for the last, you know, when he was in middle school, when he was in high school, and now that he has a job at ESPN. So these are sort of the people behind WHCTV, on the front of the camera, behind the camera, and we're hoping that everyone will come out and celebrate with us because it's going to be a fabulous, fun event. Oh, sorry. Saturday, October 20th, 7 p.m. here at West Hartford Town Hall Auditorium. Uh, you can visit our website. Um, we have sponsorships across the board. So. Thank Great. Thank, thank you. you again, Jen. Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. Um, okay. Now, the third of our items, uh, I'd like to turn it to a motion to receive communication from uh, Jillian Mendes and Maggie Kenna on their project to raise awareness for young voters. So moved. Second. Uh, motions made and seconded, and this uh, season there's probably no more appropriate uh, topic than uh, than this one. So we welcome you up there, and uh, actually all those in favor of receipt? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, welcome, and just remember to press the button on the mic. Good evening. My name is Jillian Mendes. And my name is Maggie Kenna, and we are here tonight to talk to you about an event we are hosting on November 2nd, which will be um, raising awareness for young voters. You're probably wondering how two high school students who can't even vote can pull this off. Well, we will tell you. Um, our devoted government teacher at Conard High School has inspired young students just like us to take a stand and to get our voice heard not just in the classroom, but also in our community and eventually in the world. From 4 to 7 on November 2nd, we will have a table set up behind the Noah Webster statue, and our overall motive is to get the public excited about the election. We know that there are many people who haven't voted before and might not know about the candidates running, which is why we have decided to do this. Um, we will have unbiased facts about each candidate, which will hopefully get people excited, but most importantly, informed on who to vote for. In addition, we will have a big I Will Vote poster hanging up, and we hope everyone 18 and older will sign it just as their way of saying that they will vote this November. We have been informed that our mayor, Slifka, will be making an appearance around 5 or 6, which we are very excited and thankful about. Um, even if you um, have voted before, just come down and sign our poster and receive from some facts about our potential future president. We will also have refreshments, which is always a plus. We hope to see you on November 2nd as, um, as you'll be making a pledge to vote which can influence future generations and set a very positive example. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, hey, November 2nd, look out by the Noah Webster statue. Okay, uh, now we, okay, we did those things. We're up to number four, right? Number four. Yes. Four, approval of minutes. Uh, I move that we approve public hearing uh, September 11th, uh, 2012 on 7 North Main Street. Public hearing September 11th, 2012 on 316, 340, and 342, 348 North Main Street. Public hearing September 11, 2012, on Section 30-27B of the Pension Plan, and Town Council Minutes, September 11, 2012. We receive. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we're up to public forum. Mr. O'Brien, would you mind grabbing the sign-up sheet? Uh, Paul and Judy, I see your senator, but we were going to have you come up as part of the item when we bring it up on the agenda. So we're going to 
save you for later. Uh, so next is uh, Robert Mill. I'm still hoping you do something with this microphone. I mean, it's a bit challenge for someone of my height. Would you be willing to uh, make more accommodation with regard to this? All right, I'm here to speak with regard to the items tonight on the agenda. Uh, first of all, <coughs> with regard to the amendment of the budget, uh, book in my hand, <coughs> which I refer to as a comic book. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars assembling this thing. And then the minute, the 15 minute hearing, putting it on the agenda, you're changing it for some reason without a public hearing. It should be clear that anything changed in this budget in the interest of the public, transparency should be at a public hearing and should be full disclosure of where we are, why you're changing it. Again, spend all this money on a comic book like this. It just does a disservice to the work the process goes through. The second thing I'd like to uh, speak about has to do with the suspension of the 2008 uh, taxes with regard to motor vehicle and property taxes. Again, this is a revenue process that seems to fall off the table. <coughs> Our draconian approach to budgeting works on the expense side of the financial equation with regard to revenue processes and expenditure processes. The revenue process is completely falls off the table. Again here we have a motion. There's no details as with the budget changes as to what this is about. And again, it's revenue falling off the table. Compare and contrast that to the burden that many taxpayers <coughs> are being placed. The average taxpayer who's felt the brunt of tax shifting, the brunt of uh, low assessments on high-end properties. And again, now when you're suspending motor vehicle and personal property taxes, someone has to pick up that burden. And it's always the person, the middle class, the average person living in a home around 300,000 that really takes on the chin on a percentage basis. Forget about absolute dollars, but on a percentage basis, they're getting hit. And in, in view of that, I give an example of a situation where a high-end property was just recently purchased. It was assessed for 457 thousand dollars plus or minus just last October and uh, the mayor purchased it for 530 for 75,000 72,500 dollars less than what it was assessed for here's an example just a contrast of this sort of squeeze that the average person is revenue falls off the table three million dollars of overtime a guy one hundred and seventy thousand dollars paid to a policeman and here we have our own mayor paying seventy two thousand dollars <coughs> more than the assessed value of a property. The property is underassessed. When do we stop taking this uh, as far as uh, uh, bludgeoning the average person in this town? <clears throat> the, the average person is getting hammered between the financial side on the expenditure side and the fact that the assessment process has been corrupt. It has been uh, an assessment process that has absolutely generated the wrong results. Uh, there's no fair assessment system. And again, the, the town should uh, be mindful of the fact that, uh, you know, there's not an endless supply of money and resources. In this time. Time's in expired, this Mr. Milne. So again, hope Time's you pay expired, your fair share of tax, Milne. please. Hope you pay your fair share of tax, please. The answer is no, I will not be making accommodations for the mic. Uh, Melinda Napoli is our next speaker. Good evening, Linda DiNapoli, 214 Mohegan Drive. <clears throat> I also requested accommodation relative to this microphone. Uh, I can come under the uh, category of disabled, Mr. Mayor, and I am an insult and will be contacting the department, the appropriate department at the state of Connecticut on behalf of myself and Mr. Milne. Uh, I took the appropriate steps and followed them. I went first to Ms. Lebrow yesterday who sent me to Mrs. Hewlett who never responded and so forth so I just want to be on record for that uh, regarding the suspension again I am insulted I testified uh, in my last testimony that the town was owed over five million two hundred thousand dollars in taxes and the game that's being played here at FOS with this little comic book is that they suspend the collection of the taxes okay so if they want to play that game that's fine I can join right in and not pay my car taxes not pay my personal property taxes and I can just like be the whole rest of them but no do I do that I pay my fair share and unless you're going to buck up and start collecting everyone's fair share, you should all 
with the exception of the two newly elected or three newly elected members, uh, resign. This is absolutely, totally unacceptable to treat human beings in this fashion and allow this to be done. We follow your rules, we follow your procedures, we get no very little cooperation from this council with the exception of maybe uh, one person. Uh, but uh, Mrs. Casperson, by the way, is constantly absent. I don't know if she has a personal problem or whatever, but perhaps you should find someone who can fill in for her on a more consistent uh, basis uh, and not let it be the mayor of uh, Park Road. I object to his... Uh, his okay, uh, uh, Ms. Napoli, this is not the item that you said you were going to testify about. Well, nice Please night. I got it in, though, didn't I? Okay, so I did, I did testify about the comment book and the suspension of the taxes, Mr. Mayor. And that was, in fact, one of the items. Was it not? Was it not? Nobody interrupted you until you went off topic, Mr. Napoli. So. <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. I have a letter that I'm going to be submitting at the next meeting wherein I also have been writing and emailing the mayor since June of 09 for a meeting. He never answered me, never called me. Mrs. Grace Boynton got a, a personal point call order, and mayor. answer. So point of order for Mr. Davidoff, I'm done. I'm sure the folks at home are shocked as to why I might not sit down and have a private meeting with you. All right, that ends our public forum. Uh, number six, report from the town manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of things. Um, I wanted to note that uh, firefighter Captain John Bryce um, was honored uh, last week at the annual breakfast of the bridge um, with the Build No Fences Award on uh, September 12th, more than last week. Uh, this award was presented to an individual that provides support for young people and families who tear down turf issues in town and recognize that there is enough work for all of us to do here. Captain Bryce has been an active in the Fun Run, uh, Tune Into Life, uh, Children's Charity Ball, fundraising for the West Hartford Food Pantry. Uh, he joined the West Hartford Fire Department in 1993 and is currently a captain at Station 5 on Berkshire Road. You may not have noticed yet, but uh, the, Ber the Bishop's Corner Library opened this week. Um, they open quietly. Uh, we have spent uh, nearly nine months of uh, uh, doing renovations to uh, the library, uh, putting in uh, energy efficient windows, uh, heating and cooling systems, uh, new energy efficient heating and cooling systems, uh, fiber optic technologies. Uh, on the roof of the uh, Bishop's Corner Library are solar panels that provides half of the electric power to that facility. Uh, updated, if you uh, drive by, you'll see a brand new uh, sparkling um, Bishop's Corner uh, Library. Uh, we plan to have a grand opening celebration on October 21st. Uh, the Human Services Department is having a pie sale. You want me to close the door? The Human Service Department is having its annual pie sale at this time of year. Uh, the Human Services Department um, raises money for the town that cares and for uh, um, um, other programs in the, in the Human Services Department. Um, you can order your pies and they are delivered. There you have an order form in front of you. Got some more if anybody's interested. Uh, you can order your pies for Thanksgiving. They are delivered on um, November 19th. That's the Monday of Thanksgiving week. Um, for you to pick up, and this way you won't have to bake. Mayor, I know you like to bake a lot, but this is a wonderful thing. Order forms are available in the Town Hall Library, the Town Clerk's Office, Human Services Office, the West Hartford Senior Center, the Elmwood Community Center and Office, or online at westharford.org under quick links. These are Lyman Orchard Pies. If you haven't had one, they're wonderful. And just one last item uh, I wanted to mention is that King Tut is coming to town. Uh, King Tut, the Boy King, is coming to a uh, program at the uh, children's, the new Children's Museum, Wednesday, October 3rd. Uh, the exhibit opens. They're doing a special celebration from 5.30 to 8.30 that evening um, with uh, refreshments and uh, a special um, presentation of uh, the King Tut exhibit. So if you're available, but it will be running for uh, uh, several weeks thereafter. Um, you can get to see him. That's all I really have. If you have any other questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Sure. Are there any questions for the manager right now? I do. Mrs. Hall, go ahead. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Van Winkle, could you, for the benefit of uh, our audience, talk a little bit about the fact that we will have a question on the um, on a referendum on the MDC uh, in November and a little bit uh, um, how people could find information out about that? Okay, I didn't expect that one, but anyway. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the November uh, ballot will have a, uh, a, a question about um, from the Metropolitan District Commission who supplies our water and sewer services. Um, as you may know, uh, the MDC um, has been under court order to correct um, pollution issues that they've uh, had uh, by uh, putting effluent into the Connecticut River. Uh, several years ago, we approved a bond ordinance um, for the MDC of $800 million for them to make improvements to their sewer systems. They um, have been doing uh, significant new construction at their facilities in Hartford where the treatment plants are, uh, new uh, facilities there to handle more capacity. And in addition, um, replacing uh, sewer pipes. Uh, the work in West Hartford at this point has been primarily uh, the lining of, of sewer pipes. There's a system where they are take, take those old pipes, they don't have to dig them up, they reline them and make them new. Uh, they have completed their first phase and are coming back to us for another referendum um, for an additional $800 million, and I know this is a lot of money, $800 million to continue their efforts to, uh, to uh, clean up uh, the effluent that they um, in the past have had some problems with in the Connecticut River. Um, it's on our, uh, our, our um, uh, vote on uh, election day because uh, we have to approve for the MDC a, uh, a bond uh, so they can continue to do the work that they're doing. I did um, pull the resolution from the MDC and as part of the resolution they're authorizing the use of interest rate derivatives and I'm wondering um, whether we have the ability to go back to the MDC and um, have a discussion with them on whether we think that that's an appropriate way to issue the debt. Um, I know the MDC uses a financial advisor, um, actually the same one we use um, for their issuing of bonds. So um, I'd be happy to arrange for the MDC to maybe to come to uh, finance and budget to give you a more detailed um, discussion about why they're using derivatives um, for this purpose. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Hall. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Van Winkle. We'll move to number seven, Mrs. Cantor. Number seven, uh, consideration of consent, consent calendar. I move that we place items 18 through 24 on consent. Second. Uh, motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, okay, we're under unfinished business. Number eight. Number eight, application on behalf of the Town of West Harford and Hayes Village Post 96 American Legion incorporated as co-applicants for an amendment to special development district approvals in connection with Blueback Square development for the 20 South Main Street amendment to SDD 114, the library. Mm -hmm. The town which owns the portions of the property proposes a minor modification to install a freestanding sign on the library property. Uh, I move that we table and continue to, um, and the public hearing will be on October 9th at 630. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number nine, Ms. Cantor. Number nine. Application on behalf of DR Farmington Avenue LLC, the contract purchaser of the property, which is owned by Fawad and Aziza Bakdor for a special development district and a change of the underlying zone from R6 to RP for a property located at 16 North. Quaker Lane, DR Farmington Avenue LLC also has a contract to purchase from the back door, sorry, and a budding 18-unit 18, 18 apartment building located at 804 Farmington Avenue. The purpose of this application is to allow for the construction of 12 parking spaces at the subject property for use by the apartment building's tenants. I move that we table and uh, continue and set for public hearing October 9th at 7 o'clock. Second. Uh, motion's made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number 10, Mrs. Kent. Number 10, substitute resolution from, um, from the town manager reaffirming clean energy community pledge. I move that we adopt. Second. Uh, motion's made and seconded. Um, I think 
do you want to maybe adopt? Well, Mr. O'Brien, is it feels it feels like the right thing to do is to adopt and then have the presentation surrounding it, but procedurally that may be inaccurate. So just I want to make sure we're sticking to the rules. Well, procedurally you can do it whichever way you choose, whichever way you think is most appropriate. I love you, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm always uh, pro-choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Would, would you guys like to vote on this now and then go on with this was a consent thing. So, okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. We're very proud to reaffirm our clean energy pledge. But we, more importantly, we want to hear from uh, the town manager, but also our special guests from the, um, from the clean energy uh, coalition. We have a group then that we've talked about this many times at the table over the years, but we actually have a citizen committee that has helped, that many of whom do this uh, for a living. And they have provided us with with advice that actually Mr. Van Winkle at one point quantified when we when we adopted the uh, pledge in the first place the the cost of what other cities had paid to have that same thing done by outside consultants. We had volunteers within the community put it together for us. Um, they are a, a constant resource for us, and we're thrilled to have them here. So, Mr. Van Winkle, this was. Uh, um, done at your suggestion. I think we all agreed it was a great suggestion. And if um, you could give the community an update where we are, what we're planning on doing, and then have our, our guests uh, participate. Well, I think great. our guests are going to give us an update as to okay. what we're doing. But uh, I would just uh, echo your comments. You know, uh, without the, uh, the Clean Energy Coalition, we would not be where we are today. Um, these citizens not only wrote our plan for energy conservation, but have worked with us to implement that plan. And we have made great strides. You can see, as I talked earlier, about solar on roofs. But that is minor compared to what we are doing across the system. So uh, if the Clean Energy Task Force could come up, uh, Paul Poppenchok um, and others, um, and maybe give us a little update on uh, where we are. Catherine Davini is our energy manager. Uh, she works for the town of West Hartford and joined us after we wrote our energy plan. And Catherine has also. She was the energy manager of the year in Washington? Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, and we were lucky to uh, find her. She was moving east and joined us to help us. So, Catherine? Yeah. Good evening. My name is Catherine Davini. As Ron said, I work part-time for the town. I've been here for about 18 months um, after my family relocated to Oregon. And um, I can't say how fortunate I've been to have landed in a community that has such great energy awareness it just in the fabric of the town. It's been a real pleasure working and seeing that commitment at the highest level in what we're doing here tonight, adopting this new resolution all the way down from the highest officials all the way down to the students in the classroom and, of course, our dedicated volunteer energy task force. It makes my job working for the town very, very, very easy. Um, hi. <laughs> Um, so we have a lot going on here um, in the energy world in West Hartford, and if you haven't already, you should check out our website, westhartford.org slash clean energy or slash green. Either shortcut will get you to a whole bunch of pages which are in development but have a lot of information on what we're doing. One of my responsibilities and tasks in my position is coordinating with CEFIA, um, kind of a, a revamped state agency, the Connecticut Clean Energy Finance and Investment Authority. And one of the programs they run is the Connecticut Clean Energy Communities Program. West Hartford was one of the first communities back in 05 to take the initial pledge. And we are, again, one of the first communities to renew our pledge to their revamped program. Um, CEFIA has restructured their program. Originally, it was built around only clean energy or renewable energy goals and commitments. They've revamped the program, so it now has two tracks. One is still the clean energy track, but there's now an energy efficiency component as well, and goals and benchmarks um, on that side as well. So I'm happy to say that actually West Hartford has already met some of the goals that are already lined out in the pledge. For example, on the energy efficiency side, one of the goals is to show, you know, it's, it's, it's all structured year by year, but an 11% reduction in municipal building energy use by the year 20, uh, by the fiscal year 2015. Well, we've already done that. So we're ahead of the game a little bit. 
but there's always progress to be made and there's always much more we can do. So I'm gonna let some of our dedicated volunteers um, talk about some of the pro progress we've made and then some of, the, some of the general comments we have on this pledge. Thanks. I'm Judy Allen and I'm a resident of West Hartford. Um, I am really excited about this resolution and the town reaffirming the Clean Energy Communities Municipal Pledge. I'm an active advocate for clean energy, the elimination of burning fossil fuels, and seriously addressing climate change. So I'm pleased that West Hartford has decided to be part of this pledge. In 2005, as Catherine uh, talked about, um, the original pledge, uh, the resolution indicated that emissions from traditional methods of energy production trigger asthma attacks and contribute to other respiratory illnesses as well as contribute significantly to global warming. It went on to say that this resolution was entered into with a commitment to the health of its citizens. Among the many benefits from the original pledge, such as the solar installations, uh, the commitments also led to the work of the Clean Energy Task Force, the adoption of a West Hartford Comprehensive Energy Plan, and the hiring of Catherine. <laughs> um, I recently had the opportunity to speak both with Catherine and the Clean Energy Task Force, and I am amazed at the scope of work undertaken as well as the expertise brought to the challenges West Hartford faces as it moves into a clean energy future. Um, West Hartford's vision statement from the energy plan emphasizes the importance of promoting a culture of conservation, and it wisely points out that conservation requires a shared sense of purpose and responsibility. This new commitment to the 2012 pre pledge will serve to continue that culture of conservation and will hold the town accountable to meet its goals. So I'm glad that West Hartford continues to recognize climate change and the health of its citizens as a priority. I believe this pledge has the potential to demonstrate leadership on the part of town officials, develop citizen participation, strengthen our common purpose, and serve to promote creative solutions. I enthusiastically support this resolution. Good evening. I'm Paul Papinchak. I live at that slice of um, heaven called Buena Vista neighborhood, 24 Racebrook Road. And I'm a member of the Clean Energy Task Force. And um, I just want to keep this brief. I thank you for um, uh, adopting this resolution, renewing our town's commitment. Uh, the benefits have been many, and they're hard to quantify, but uh, they are indeed uh, quantifiable. Uh, over 1,300 of our fellow citizens um, purchase green power. So they are making the commitment and they are um, actually paying a slight premium to make sure that their um, resources for electricity come from uh, renewable resources that um, will improve uh, the environmental impact of our energy use. Um, that program has resulted in 20 kilowatts of, of um, photovoltaics being provided to the town at no cost, and <clears throat> they include installations on Town Hall, uh, Conard and Hall High School, and soon to be um, 11 kilowatts at um, uh, Walcott <clears throat> uh, School. And uh, that has a value of over $100,000 uh, to the community. This has also uh, contributed to energy awareness and uh, inclusion of energy education in the curriculum in the schools and energy competitions that have again been enthusiastically embraced by the staff, faculty, and especially the students in uh, competing to reduce their energy use and be responsible for their own carbon footprint. We have um, installed uh, through a purchase power agreement, um, or we will be installing, uh, 255 kilowatts of um, photovoltaic electric generating um, equipment at um, Bishop's Corner, Bristow, and the Public Works Building. 
And so I want to thank all the, um, my uh, fellow citizens on the task force because it has uh, helped to move the agenda here in town. And I want to um, thank the town council for the leadership because without their um, unyielding support, we wouldn't be able to do this. And um, we certainly are grateful for Catherine because, again, we wouldn't be able to do this without Catherine. She's a true gift. And then finally, I would just encourage you not to rest on our laurels. If you may have noticed that in a recent article in The Current, they identified how between 2008 and 2012, West Hartford reduced their utility cost by over $2.4 million. And, but what is important to recognize, number one, that was the result of some excellent uh, commodity procurement um, by our um, our purchasing staff here in the town, and so we got power less expensively. And um, last winter, we also got gypped because our winter was 30% warmer than normal, which is a significant difference. So we saved a lot of energy, and we had a number of our buildings offline during the October storm. So the point is there's much work yet to be done, and um, we thank you again for your support. Thank you to Paul and Judy uh, and Catherine. Um, I wanted to uh, just mention that they, they touched on some of this, but this is, was very much a grassroots effort, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see somebody was here from the start of it to see it's become permanent, really. Um, and it's, it's in, through, through Catherine's uh, position, it's ingrained here in, in what we do every day in town hall. Um, but, but this got off the ground. This, this was always, wasn't always so. And there was a time when people were skeptical about this, and we really just we had some some um, very well-intentioned residents like Paul and Judy who came to us and said, "We really want you to look at this." And you know, some people were skeptical, and, and it hasn't always been easy. Um, but I wanted to thank not just them and all the other members, but um, two people from the council in particular who who have since left and had really carried this forward. The first was Maureen Kelly McClay, um, who who started out started this process here at the council table, and then Tim Brennan. Uh, picked it up after that, and um, if not for those efforts, um, I don't know if we'd have Catherine here today. We always take somebody uh, from the council to really, really sponsor and make it go forward. Um, and to know for the folks that are, uh, you know, watching at home, we're not. Sometimes these guys do push us. You know, there's not always immediate agreement on this. We we have to change our thinking. We have to get comfortable with this, and they're they're catalysts for change. And and it takes time. But um, you know, if we can do it, I think it's a demonstration that people at home. Can, can do this as well and, and change your habits. And, and thank you for pushing us and keep up the good work. Um, I wanted to just share one um, in this theme. It's not, it doesn't relate to energy, but it's recycling. Just because I, I came across this today in some, some documents that I had uh, for another meeting, there are some new data re re, um, released on recycling uh, across Connecticut. And West Hartford is the number on a pounds per person basis, we are the number eight community in Connecticut um, in terms of, uh, of recycling. We recycled last this past year 227.5 pounds per person in town, um, and that that in, that includes in the population that includes you know kids. So so imagine if you have a number of, of kids who don't throw much out, um, the average adult may be twice this number or, or something higher. The savings to us, um, be, you know, Paul was just talk, touching on a lot of the savings the town's had through the clean energy efforts. The savings of the town was just short of five hundred thousand dollars for this because what happens here is if you you have something that's a recyclable, you have the choice at home. You can throw it in the trash, throw it in the recycle bin. If you throw it in the trash, it's taken away, and we pay sixty nine dollars a ton of a tip fee. If you don't throw it in there, it's recycled for free. So um, all everybody at home, through our efforts, saved almost $500,000 last year in that. And I did some quick math. That came to just short of 15 million pounds of recycled items that didn't make its way into the to the uh, to the trash stream. So um, in addition to, to uh, renewing our, um, our our pledge to clean energy, I hope we somehow here renew our commitment to recycling as well, because there is a serious dollar savings. Mr. Van Winkle. Just one more um, energy uh, comment um, for those that uh, it's great for our local government to be doing this, um, but you can also be doing this at home. Um, Northeast Utilities has programs that they'll come into your house and help you identify energy conservation uh, methods in your house, from sealing up doors uh, to changing light bulbs to 
um, doing a full inspection of your entire house. So if you're interested in having an uh, energy expert come to your home to help you figure out how to do this at home, um, you just go on the Northeast Utilities website and you'll be able to sign up for have someone come and help you at your home. Save some money there too. Okay, thank you. Thank you again to everybody. Uh, we're on to number 11, I think, right, Ms. Cantor? Number 11, business? but before they leave, I just oh. want to give a shout-out to my niece who's in the audience, Kate Marr from Conard High. Hi, Katie. <laughs> and welcome to the Government Students at Hall, uh, from Conard, I mean. Nice going, oh, well. With that, <laughs> I didn't dismiss you. <laughs> Okay, number 11, ordinance repealing de designated disposal area ordinance. Uh, I move that we set for public hearing October 9th at 6.15. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 12. Ms. Number 12, resolution to amend the fiscal year 2012-2013 general fund budget for the purchase of snow removal equipment. I move that we adopt. Second. Um, motion's made and seconded. Mr. Van Winkle, we're, we're uh, going to ask you to address this one, be, not because it is a significant item, but because it's an insignificant item in a lot of ways. Uh, we, we had some testimony here earlier um, that was a little painful, and, and um, this is often the case, maybe a little misleading. Um, so this is a resolution to amend the budget. Um, it's to amend the budget for a $5,300 item, and it's... Um, a cost neutral item so we're, we're as you're going to explain we're buying a small piece of equipment and we did it by selling another piece of equipment and there's no additional cost to the town um, hardly controversial and hardly um, conspiratorial but uh, for the record could you please just address it I don't know what to add to that sir um, we we uh, recently sold a uh, f-350 uh, truck that was deemed surplus um, we were able to get fifty three hundred dollars for it um, we have a, a new truck that uh, was purchased uh, last year, and we'd, we'd like to take that $5,300, which we received for the sale of that truck, to buy a plow for the truck that we already own so that we can put it into uh, employee in our winter storms. So um, it doesn't change anything. It really just takes an asset that we sold. The revenue from that we'll put back into an asset that we'll use to fight winter storms. Uh, excellent. And am I correct that it was uh, Mr. Phillips in the Department of Public Works who uh, managed to sell that? Uh, as he always is, he's very entrepreneurial. And he, before, before asking us for a new piece of equipment, he actually found the money for it. Yes, uh, he's he's uh, he's done an amazing job. John Phillips is our director of Public Works. He's only been there a few short years, uh, and he has made uh, huge differences in how we operate and um, and efficiencies. That we're, Last year, his budget um, came well under, part of it obviously because of the winter storms that we didn't have, but um, he's constantly looking at ways to uh, kind of find ways to make this his operation operate more efficiently. And the sale of this uh, vehicle to, uh, to purchase a new plow is an excellent example. Okay, thank you. Anything further on this? Okay, all those in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 13, Mrs. Cantor. Number 13, resolution authorizing suspense of taxes owed on the 2008 grand list for motor vehicles and personal property. I move that we adopt. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, again, Mr. Van Winkle, this was the subject of some interesting testimony uh, earlier tonight. Um, but it is, it's a little complicated. Um, so if you could, you could address this one as well. Well, let me just say, we're not suspending the collection of taxes. Um, that's not what's going on here. Um, the, the Connecticut General Statutes require that we have a suspense list, which are um, taxes after a few years that have not been collected go, come off of our books as a collectible and go on to the suspense list. This doesn't mean that we're not pursuing them to be collected. In an in a individual year, we collect 99.2% of all the taxes we levied on real estate, on personal property, and the town of West Hartford. 99.2 is very high. Uh, if you look at um, towns across the state. But um, of the, all those taxes that we levy over a period of years, we'll collect 99.8% of all those taxes that are levied. Now, why don't we collect some of those taxes? Almost all of what we're looking at tonight are um, automobiles. Someone that was in town, perhaps uh, rented an apartment, uh, perhaps went to school locally, um, didn't pay their tax bill, but left. Um, we give this suspense list over to uh, a, a collector, 
a bill collector who will pursue these, uh, these uh, persons nationwide. If they're still in Connecticut, you can't register that car, so we, we'll catch them that way. Um, but generally, at this point, they have left the state in some way. So we will still pursue them, and we will collect um, the vast majority of these taxes regardless. Mrs. Cantor, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, we did go over this in finance and budget, both both of, of these items. Um, and the 2008 is a it's a it's a state um, I think it's a state guideline that, that 2008, but it's also generally accepted accounting principles that you have an outstanding receivable for so long you have to write it off, take it off as a receivable, and then whatever you collect, you co collect as income when you receive it. So this is a standard, accepted, and actually required procedure. Just to emphasize, it's something we do every year, and it, it is not that we are suspending the collection. We're putting them on what's called the suspense list, but we give them to a collector, and we pursue these taxes. As far as we can find that person, we will pursue them. Mr. Davidoff. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Van Winkle, just want to confirm that uh, in addition to the amounts that are listed here, uh, interest and penalties still accrue uh, to the town of West Hartford, even though we have not collected them. That's correct? Yes. Uh, uh, of course, if you don't pay your taxes on time, uh, interest and penalties accrue. Um, they are set by state law. Uh, and uh, the failure to pay over several years, those numbers can um, really run up to something significant. Right. So to, to just summarize, uh, contrary to the uh, testimony we heard this evening, the erroneous testimony in my opinion, uh, the town of West Hartford is not uh, saying that these taxes are not due and payable, but uh, we are basically going to seek payment uh, in a different venue and a different uh, way of, of doing so, a different vehicle, and uh, we're also going to be uh, due the interest and penalties which have accrued. So um, the um, effect to our taxpayers and to our, our budgets is, is not impacted in, in a negative sense. Yes, Correct. I would agree that contrary to the erroneous testimony. I'm sorry. Contrary to the erroneous testimony earlier, real estate taxes um, are leaned. Uh, if you don't pay your taxes, you'll earn interest and penalties on those. Um, we will eventually uh, foreclose on um, that property or get it when it is foreclosed by a bank, perhaps. But we always are paid on real estate taxes. Personal property taxes, which might be a, a small business that um, went out of business. They no longer exist. There are no longer assets. Um, those are, are a small number of these are those kinds of assets that um, we don't have a, perhaps a individual but a limited liability corporation that we may not be able to pursue. Um, and car taxes we pursue and the, they are not suspended. They are something we will go after. They, they, uh, if we get um, find that person, which we will, the vast majority of these we do collect, um, they will pay interest and penalties on that. And just so the people at home know what the amount is for the personal property of those companies that may have gone out of business, the amount that we're suspending is $83,430.79. So when correct. one looks at the scope of the budget in terms of the amount of revenue that we collect from various uh, revenue sources from taxes, it's not a very large percentage that was uncollected. And that is correct. We levy about short of $200 million in taxes. And so uh, we're talking about 83000 in personal property and 28000 in motor vehicle taxes that are still outstanding. Um, the vast majority of those we will still collect. Right. So I, I think, uh, so the record's straight, uh, the majority of the people that uh, reside in West Hartford or do business in West Hartford are uh, law-abiding and do pay their taxes and are quite responsible and do it in a timely way. And as the manager pointed out, over 99% of our taxes are, are made uh, payments are made in a timely fashion. Perhaps it's not a majority, it's 99.2%, roughly, of the people. No, here's okay. Catherine. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> somebody want to change that. All right, anything further on this item? Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. We're up to announcements. Um, our dear friend uh, Richard Patrici is here. Um, so we want to make sure this is announced first given that he's in the audience. The Park Road Parade is on October 6, 10.30 a.m. The Park Road Association invites you to the 15th annual, that's pretty incredible, mm -hmm. Mr. Patrizzi, 15th annual Park Road Parade, again, October 6th at 10.30 a.m. It is a zany, unique, and most of all, cel a celebration of all that is good in West Hartford and beyond. Uh, I think most people know this, but if you are one of the few that has not experienced it, the parade features bands, clowns, dancers, floats, antique cars, 
Dogs of all shapes and sizes, sports mascots, color guards, businesses, civic and cultural organizations, and town officials. Each year, the parade draws over 7,000 people to Park Road neighborhood. Last year, nearly 100 contingents marched the one-half mile down Park Road from South Highland Street to Jessamine Street. 2012 Grand Marshals are Joe Fury, the chief meteorologist for Fox Connecticut TV, and CBS Radio Hartford and traffic reporter Rachel Lutzker of Fox 61. Uh, if you want any more information, uh, please contact Mr. Patrici. Thank you. So we look forward to seeing you on the 6th. Uh, next, we have uh, the West Harvard Center Kids Card has returned uh, this October. It gives shoppers the opportunity to support an important cause while enjoying a great discount at the most popular center, shops and restaurants. The, this ca year's card allows shoppers to save 20% at 75 participating locations for 10 days from October 25th to November 3rd. 100% of the $50 Kids Card purchase price goes directly to support uh, the NICU at Connecticut Children's Medical Center. These can be purchased online now or uh, select retail lo uh, locations beginning October 18th. If you'd like more information, visit uh, www.centerkidscard.org. National Take Back Day is uh, on September 29th at, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It provides an opportunity for the public to surrender expired, unwanted, or unused pharmaceutical controlled substances and other medications for destruction. Uh, the West Harvard Police Department will collect these uh, unwanted drugs in the town hall parking lot closest to Raymond Road. The event is free and open to everyone. And I want to point out that I believe this was actually inspired by a resident who saw it in another community and wrote to us and said, hey, you know, when are you guys going to do it? And then Chief Gove turned around, sent a small contingent up to somewhere in Massachusetts, I think, to check it out. And here it is. So thanks to the chief and to that resident. Beer, It's History, Making, and Tasting is a series that explores the history of drink in America. Uh, close your ears to these students that are here. Um, the October 4th session at 7 p.m. will be led by Dana Gordon, an avid home brewer, amongst other pursuits. Uh, participants will look to learn the basics of brewing, including fermentation techniques, hops, and modern recipes. The final session on October 10th at 6.30, participants will meet a brewmaster and hear the insider's take on the industry and microbreweries. Uh, they'll then have an event to enjoy the beer tasting, which will showcase several New England brewers. For more information, uh, please call the Noah Webster House at 521-5362. Uh, there's a monthly series entitled Cooks and Books, uh, where sh top chefs from around Connecticut come to discuss their favorite cookbook as well as their restaurants. Each chef's all-time favorite cookbook will be revealed at the beginning of the event. Uh, the October 15th event at 6.30 features our own Bill Rizzuto, the owner of Rizzuto's on Memorial Road. Registration begins October 1st in person at the library or by phone, 561-6990. And last but not least, the Family Resource Center is offering People Empowering People, a personal leadership development program with a strong community focus. Are you worried about, your prob or about problems in your community? Help change them. Turn your concern for children into action. Learn the skills to make this happen. Find out about the People Empowering People program. Uh, through an informational meeting at the Family Resource Center at Charter Oak International Academy, 425 Oakwood Ave, on Friday, October 12th at 9 o'clock a.m. If you'd like to sign up or get more information, please contact Robin Drago at 233-4701. That's the list. Anyone else? You don't even look at the calendar. Okay. <laughs> You're exhausted from the last meeting. All right. Moving on. Uh, reports for the Corporation Council. Mr. O'Brien. No need for executive session, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. Are there questions for Mr. O'Brien? I want to note, it's not because we never have questions. They're usually answered outside of this meeting. Oftentimes in executive session if we need one, or outside. Uh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Um, yes, uh, we have uh, two appointments. Uh, go to Mrs. Hall for this. Thank you. I'd like to move that we appoint Edward Thomas, a member of the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission, for a term ending February 28th, 2017, and appoint Nancy Marchetti, a member of the Advisory Commission for Persons with Disabilities, for a term ending December 31st, 2015. Second. So moved. Yes. Um, I'll give Denise the motion, and you can second. second. Okay. Uh, all, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, no need for executive session, so we go to 
The consent calendar, Mrs. Cantor. I move I move that we place items 18 through 24 on consent calendar. I mean, I, I move that we adopt. I'm sorry. Second. Uh, motion's made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 26 on our communication. Uh, from Jillian Gilcrest, Early Care and Education Policy Analyst for Connecticut Association for Human Services on an update of West Hartford Early Childhood Partnership. I move that we table. Second. Uh, motion's made and seconded. This is, we're going to table it to October 9th. It may become the 23rd. They're checking their schedules. Um, they were victims of the last meeting <laughs> along with several others. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to suspend the rules to receive the resignation of Joel Smith from the Design Review Advisory Commission. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to receive the resignation of Joel Smith from the Design Review Advisory Commission. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, and thank, we want to thank Mr. Smith for his service. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And we are up to uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. It's, the it's a miracle. Is